Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, we have the same three capacitors as we had in the previous video. We have a 2, a 3, and a 4 microfarad capacitor. The first two are charged with 40 and 80 microcoulombs of charge. The third one is not charged. What's different about this example is that we've now connected the positive side to the positive side of the, of the two first two charged capacitors. The third capacitor did not have charge initially when we connected three capacitors. The objective is to find the charge on each of the three capacitors when steady state has been achieved. The thing we want to try and figure out is which way do we think the charges are going to move. And even though this capacitor is larger than this capacitor, it has twice as much charge, and so we believe that some of the charge, some of the positive charge, is going to move over here. The assumption is that this charge will move over this direction. When that happens, we have an extra charge over here, which means that this charge is going to move over in that direction, adding a negative charge over here, causing a positive charge to appear over here, which came from the positive charge that moved in this direction around the circuit. And that's what we're expecting to happen. If that's the case, and of course, if we're wrong, that's quite all right. We're just going to assume it's this way. We're going to solve the problem that way. If we're wrong, we'll end up with a negative answer instead of a positive answer, and everything will work out anyway. So what we can do now is, since we have them all connected in series, we can add the voltages of the three capacitors, and they should add up to zero. So going from here to there, that's a plus V1. From there to there is a minus V2 because we go from the positive to the negative end of that capacitor. And then from here to there is again is a positive plus V3 because we go from the negative end to the positive end and that all must add up to zero. So what we could say here is that V1 plus V3 equals V2. And then going back to the definition of capacitance, which is the charge over the voltage, which means the voltage can be defined as the ratio of the charge divided by the capacitance, which means that we can write this as Q1 over C1 plus Q3 over C3 is equal to Q2 over C2. C1, C2, and C3 are the capacitance of the three capacitors, and Q1, Q2, and Q3 are the final charge on the three capacitors. Since we know what C1, C2, and C3 are, we can go ahead and write those numbers down. So we can write that this is Q1 over 2 plus Q3 over 4 is equal to Q2 over 3. We don't have to write microfarads because to simplify, we just leave those off. Now we need some relationships between Q1, Q2, and Q3. What we can say is that the charge on the third capacitor will equal the charge that leaves the second capacitor. Therefore, we can say that Q3, the final charge on the third capacitor, is going to be equal to the difference between the charge that started in this capacitor and the charge that we ended up with. In other words, Q2 minus Q2. So this is the start of the charge on the second capacitor, and that's the end charge on the second capacitor. That difference in charge will be the same amount of charge that collects on this capacitor. And the first capacitor, we can say that Q1 will be equal to the charge that it started with, Q1, big Q1, which is the initial charge on the first capacitor, plus the charge that leaks off this capacitor. So you can see that the charge goes in both directions. The positive charge goes here, and the negative charge goes over here. Hmm, which means that this, the difference will be plus Q2 minus Q2. So that's the amount of charge that comes off of this capacitor, which will go in this direction, the positive charge in this direction, and the negative charge in that direction. So now we have some good comparisons between the different charges. Now what we need to do is, let's see here. Hmm, we can write Q2. What we're going to do here is write Q2 in terms of Q1. Q2 is equal to, when we bring this across, big Q1 plus big Q2, and bringing this Q1 across minus small Q1. And of course, these two charges together, notice that's 40 and 80 microcoulombs, 
together that's 120 so q2 is equal to 120 minus q1 all right so now that allows me to replace this q2 by this quantity right here the only thing left to do is we need something for q3 in terms of q1 but since we know what q2 is we can say that q3 because what i'm going to do is take this bring it down here this is q3 is equal to big q2 minus small q2 which is equal to this that's minus 120 and then minus times a minus would be plus q1 and of course q2 is 80 so this becomes 80 minus 120 or q3 is equal to 80 minus 120 which is minus 40 plus q1 or solving this for yeah no i don't have to i already have q3 in terms of q1 so now I'm ready to substitute those two equations into this equation right here. Coming up here, we can write Q1 divided by 2 plus Q3. Q3 is minus 40 plus Q1, minus 40 plus Q1 divided by 4 is equal to Q2, which is 120 minus Q1. 120 minus Q1 divided by 3. Now I'm ready to get rid of the denominators by multiplying both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator, which in this case is 12. And 12 divided by 2 is 6, so we get 6q1 plus 12 divided by 4 is 3. 3 times minus 40, that would be minus 120, minus 120. And 3 times this gives us plus 3q1. And that is equal to 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 times 120 is 480. And here we have minus Q1 times 4. That would be minus 4Q1. Okay, now I'm ready to move all the Q1s to one side, all the numbers to the other side. 6 plus 4 plus 3 is 13Q1 is equal to 480 plus 120, which would be 600. And so Q1 is equal to. For that, we better grab a calculator. 600 divided by 13 equals 46.15 microcoulombs. 46.15 microcoulombs. So that's the final charge on the first capacitor. Now, since we have these handy equations, let's figure out what we have on the second capacitor and the third capacitor. Q2 is equal to 120 minus Q1. So 120 minus Q1 minus plus 120 equals, that would be 73.85 microcoulombs. And Q3 is equal to minus 40 plus Q1, minus 40 plus Q1. And so that would be minus 40 plus this, that gives us a positive 6.15 microcoulombs. What it looks like happened is that 6.15 microcoulombs went from this capacitor to this capacitor and 6.15 microcoulombs went from this capacitor to this capacitor and then it stopped. And so here we have the final charge on each of the three capacitors. To make sure we did it correctly, we can go back to this equation right here and plug in all the Q's and C's to make sure that this equation matches. In other words, the left side will equal the right side. So we're going to do a check. We have Q1 divided by C1. So Q1 is 46.15 divided by C1, which is 2, plus we have Q3 divided by C3. That would be 6.15 divided by 4 should equal Q2 divided by 3. And Q2 is right here, 73.85 divided by 3. So let's see if this is indeed equal to each other. So looking at the left side, we had 46.15 divided by 2 plus 6.15 divided by 4 equals, on the left side we get 24.61, and so the question is are they equal to that? 73.85 divided by 3 equals, and I get 24.61, and sure enough, came out 
The answers appear to be correct. Those are the final charges on the three capacitors when they're hooked up like this. And that's how it's done.